the movement mechanics in Quake Champions. I know there has been an influx of um, newer players uh, from different games recently. Unfortunately, the movement, there isn't that great of a tutorial in the game. And so you kind of have to be taught how to do it. Otherwise, you're not really going to learn it intuitively. Um, so I'll try to do my best to explain it. And I'll show you examples of likely what you're doing when you're moving around and attempting to strafe jump and why it's not working and what the successful way of doing it is. Um, so just to briefly explain, there are 16 champions within the game. There are four light champions who all run with a base speed of 320 units per second. Shadows, I will... You have uh, eight I know good medium good champions who all in. have a base movement speed in terms of running around of 310. Then you have four tanks. Uh, that's a little... The base speed is 300, More. except for Keel has 310 now. Uh, no but... There are, these two champions right here are unique because, and I'll explain later. Um, but yeah, so as far as dodging is concerned, the tanks are the largest and have uh, the lowest dodging. Mediums are obviously in the middle. Lights are the fastest. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get started here on one of the maps that you'll see the most. And I'll do a few like trick jumps and stuff or like just show you like basic jumps, I guess that you can utilize once you start getting good uh, with movement on some other maps. But this is probably the best one to show you like in a straight line of how to try and improve and like what the benchmark is for the units per second that you should try to reach. Probably what you're doing with how strafe jumping works is because you can see if you run in a straight line, doesn't matter which direction, you're gonna go the intended speed of your champion. Okay, there are a few champions, which I will show you, where if you're just holding forward, you will start to slowly accelerate. But for 80 to 90 percent of the options that you're going to play with, that's not the case. Okay, so just know that when you're moving in a direction, this is like how fast that you're going to go. Okay, now within Quake, how it's worked is when you start moving forward or backwards in a direction, you start strafing. You see how I start going a little bit faster? And then you can really see it along a wall here. Like once you're along the wall, see how much faster I'm going? Now you try to apply that to using that in the air with jumping. And that's why it's called strafe jumping. So you're doing that over and over again. And that's how you effectively get through maps. So if you look here, if you just jump forward, you don't gain any speed. It doesn't help you at all. Incoming quad. You might be able to jump a rocket or two that somebody's throwing at you, but that's it. The way to actually like gain speed. So let's just let's just do left and right alternating, like this, and not really looking elsewhere. See, I'm gaining a little speed, but I'm still pretty Quad's slow. On. Like, but if you notice, if I'm holding forward and right, and I start looking from the intended direction that I'm going, about 45 degrees. See, I start to gain speed. Now, eventually, so let's say I want to move this way. I can't keep moving to the right or I'll just hit the wall and then I'll lose speed. So you need to think of strafe jumping works kind of like how a snake moves, how it works in an S movement. So you want to go that way for a little while, but then you want to cut back. So you're like constantly creating this like center of direction, but with right and left movement. Or think of like uh, inline skating when you see that at the uh, Winter Olympics or whatever. When they're trying to gain speed down down the straight, they're not just like kicking their legs like forward and backwards. They're moving in a like side to side motion while propelling forward to gain speed. That's like the easiest analogy I can give you in how um, it's typically going to work for pretty much every uh, champion in this game. So just a quick example of we want to get over to there. But like I said, we can't hold strafe right the whole time. Then I start moving this way. And see, I got up to 800 units a second. That's For me, that's like really easy. But I would be even happy if, you know, the first couple times that you're trying to do this, that you got up to, let's say, even like the 600 range over here. Another good one is to show you just this in a straight line, like all the way from here to the teleporter. And we can even later, and I'll show you another example as well as starting from here. See, if we just jump and we're just doing left and right, you're really not gaining very much. And I didn't even reach 600. Let's go back there now. 
and we'll do it the right way, the strafe jumping. Now you can either do like left and right or right and left every time, or sometimes based off of where you're going, it's okay to do right twice and then left. It just depends on how you're banking into the direction that you want to go. I got to 850. Now, if I go through here and then go all the way to the end, I can likely reach about 900. Yep. Which is about this. I, I can't remember. I think speed of rockets is 1,000, but it could be 900. So you're about going as fast as a rocket is traveling. See? You can really get some speed in this game if you start learning how to actually properly move around the map. Another good example is because the first jump that you do, as you've noticed, I don't just start here and go to right or left. Because I'm only gaining like up to 420 or 430, right? You kind of, what you want to do is you start your first jump with what's called a circle jump because you're doing like a half circle in your movement. Because you're already, see like my movement speed on the ground there? I'm not just at 310. I'm already starting to be higher, and so you're you're starting with a better advantage into your jump. So see, instead of being at like 430, my first jump was like 500. Like the best you can do with probably Visor is like about 520, 530 in your first jump because he's a little faster than the others. But that's just a good example. So this is if you just walk straight, you can't make it to there, right? But if I do a circle jump, so like I just rotate my body onto this and then jump, boom, easy. Or if I just hold forward and do it, it's not possible. Now another thing to note that a lot of people are probably making this mistake is, and I'm guessing most people use either space bar, which that's crotch for me, but they use space to jump or mouse two. I use mouse two. Now when you're doing your strafe jumps, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot. Okay, because I'll show you one more time. This is doing it properly by jumping as you're landing. Look how fast I got. Now, let's do it if I hold jump the whole time. There's a built-in mechanic within this game that if you're holding jump, you gain less air acceleration. So, that's probably what a lot of people, once they start getting the hang of the angles and they notice they're gaining speed, but they're like, why am I not gaining as much speed as other people? Probably because they're habitually just holding jump. You can't. If you want to do it properly, you have to think about, like, as your toes are touching the ground, boom, you're pressing jump again. Now, you don't have complete, like, air control. So let's say we want to go here, and we're trying to go to the heavy armor. You kind of have to do, like, once you get over here with, like what's called like VQ3 champions, the vanilla Quake 3 movement of strafe jumping. You kind of have to, as you're stopped, you have to let yourself slide just a bit and then circle strafe in the direction that you want to go. So as another example here, we want to go this way. See how I like kind of mini stopped and then arced, you know, my crosshair to where I wanted to go. And remember, it's not snappy movement. Be smooth with it. You don't need to jerk your mouse around. You just need to know where you want to go. Already be thinking about where you want to be on the map. Now, the same rules apply with rocket jumps. Like, you can also... So, as an example... At the heavy armor here, I can just hold forward and rocket jump, and I can make it to the bridge. But you can also accelerate in the air. So let's do this. Well, of course I failed it the first time. But essentially, if you want, and you learn how to strafe jump properly, you can make it all the way from heavy to rail in one rocket jump with any champion. Like, well, Enerkin sort of like probably not because they have a special thing where. Uh, they get decelerated when they rocket jump, otherwise they move around the map way too fast. But for most of the champs, you can do stuff like that in this game. Also, you can like rocket boost yourself by just like looking backwards real quick, firing, 
and then holding in the opposite direction. So I want to go to my what will be my left. Do you see how I held left like that? Instead, oh, I want to go this way now. I hold right, and then move my mouse back to where I want to go, and then continue strafe jumping. Now, there'll be some more jumps that I can show you later where, like, you have to actually, like, do good strafe jumps in order to make them. Um, but for now, we'll switch to the other movement styles in the game. So, as an example here, the movement that Ranger I was showing you with, with just vanilla strafe jumping, VQ3 movement, is available technically for everyone. Okay, there are some champs who are uncapped with that movement and other champs who are capped because they have an additional passive to their movement, which makes them even more mobile. So a prime example of that will be Anarchy, and I'll show you now. So Anarchy has uh, what's in his kit is designed as air control. Uh, he has what comes from a different quake called CPM, Challenge Pro Mode. So typically people will call it CPM movement. So he also has strafe jumping. Okay, but as you can see, look, I'm, I'm capped at 640. But why am I capped at 640? That doesn't seem very fair, right? Well, the reason that it is fair is because air control allows you to have increased mobility when you're wanting to turn. So as I was showing you earlier, where you kind of have to go here and you have to stop and start again, you don't have to with energy. You get to zip around the map and be very mobile with this champion. And anywhere that you're moving your mouse, while you're moving in the air, will take you where you want to go. Now, the the differences in him are that when you're holding forward, just forward, you will maintain the speed that you have, and the turning radius that you do will be a wider arc. So an example is, I want to attack this heavy. I know that they're fighting. they're going to fight for it, they're too weak to fight for it. I'm really stacked. I want to come into the room and already have my crosshair ready to fight. So I just hold forward to move in and be ready. Okay? You cannot make as sharp a turns when just holding forward. You have to do a lot more mouse movement by just holding forward than you do just holding right or just holding left. You can make much sharper turns with right and left. Okay? Also, so let's see, I just do strafe jumping like that. You see, I could slowly gain speed as well when doing right or left. Now, the easiest way to learn how to move is to, like, once you've done a strafe jump, is to just start doing left and right, okay? That'll that'll get you where you want to go for the most part and, like, make you, like, pretty good with anarchy right away, okay? In learning how to use the air control like that. The advanced movement is, is then learning how to just do forward and then when you want to switch to just left or right. Or right. Okay. <clears throat> now an example to show you though is Anarchy and Sorlag both have the same movement and their air acceleration is affected differently because of the air control that they have. So if I touch this pad now and I try to do the left or right, I'm not really going anywhere. I can't really go very far. Okay? So I'm trying to get up here. I can't go very far. You have to hold just forward when you go up jump pads. So you can even, like, uh, juke people out that are, like, at the top of the jump pad waiting for you by just holding forward and then looping back around. Like this. I'll show you again. Coming in like that. You can see I, even when I landed, I was at, like, 340. Now... Any other champion that I play right now, so if I went back to Ranger and tried this, it's not going to work. If I take this jump pad and try to make it to this sledge, he's going to fall short every time. He doesn't have the same air acceleration. But with Anarchy, I can smoothly turn around, and then once I reach my peak, think of it like reaching the top of your jump shot in basketball. That's when then I can start using like strafe, the strafe angles, like with regular strafe jumping, to gain even more acceleration and make certain jumps like this. Boom. Like I said, other ch Sorlag can do this as well. Other champions cannot. They will fall flat on their face and land to the bottom floor every time. 
So that is like a very unique aspect that uh, that Anarchy and Sorlag can make use of compared to other champions. Um, as well as a key thing to note is when you RJ boost around with Anarchy or Sorlag, they have a like uh, what's it called? They have these air deceleration when they rocket jump around because if they're allowed to go whatever speed when they rocket jump boost with air control, they're almost impossible to catch at times in certain game modes. So they had it had to be nerfed a little bit. So you can go over your 640 base speed, but as you can see, it will slow you down towards that cap again. Now with Anarchy, if you inject, you dodge faster, and your max speed that you can reach you can get up to like 700, 710, something like that. So he gets a little bit of a speed boost when he uses his ability. So he gets healed, and he gets faster. So that's that's air control. And I can show you a few more like tricky jumps uh, that you can utilize off jump pads and stuff later on. Um, another thing to note, for, for them though, like how I said with the other champs, like you don't want to hold jump when moving around, with Anarchy and Sword, like you can, honestly. After your first jump, you can just hold jump if you want. You could st you still would gain faster if you're not, but it's really not that bad. Especially like once you reach your cap speed, you can just like hold jump and get around. And you should be okay. So they are the exception to the rule. Now the other thing is like uh I'll have to show it on another map because of uh lips and stuff like that um so let's switch to another champ i'll switch to uh to slash actually i'll switch to strog first so so the two uh crouch sliding champions in the game are strog and peeker and slash so we're gonna start with strog though because he has the uh, how do i explain it he has the more like baseline movement with it whereas slash can get much trickier and much faster than him and certain extra rules apply to her to be able to do that. So we'll teach you the one that they both can use, and then I'll move to Slash. Okay, so Strog also has strafe jumping, just like everybody else. As you can see, I'm gaining speed. And his cap of speed is 750 because of the crouch sliding. Crouch sliding is such a nice mobile fluid movement to use once you get used to it it'll probably be one of your favorite movements in any game especially if you get really good with slash okay how the crouch sliding works is that once you've landed you're holding crouch okay and as you can see here i can only go so far before the crouch slide then decelerates me to a stop so you have to get kind of used to doing one one thousand one one thousand two then it ends. So like pretty much a whole second is how you can slide on the ground, how long you can slide on the ground with Strog. So you get to learn that when you're trying to crouch slide, that you start doing those type of movements within that time frame, and then you can transfer to jumping again. So with crouch sliding, it works with the same angles as strafe jumping. Okay, so when you're strafe jumping like this, you use the same kind of like where I want to go to like a 45 to 90 degree angle. With crouch sliding, you can go a little farther than 45 degrees, but you're trying to look in that angle to gain speed. It still works like trying to do like circular movements and S movements. GG Saturday, getting yeah, paid by have... the frag J. K, oh. great work. Thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But as you can see, like you can be extremely mobile with crouch sliding. Now, the tricky thing to get used to that you can utilize with crouch sliding that you can't with others is that you can just hold one direction to get a really good start or a big change of direction if you need to. So an example is, let's say I'm here and I want to get the hell out of here before they come from like rocket launcher or something. If I start looking in the opposite direction, so I'm looking right, okay? 
But then I swing my mouse from right to left while holding left. You can gain a lot of speed. Now it's like getting stuck on the uh, the stair there. But look at that. In one jump, I got to 624. You can do it the other way too. So if I want to go this way, I want to look 90 degrees or a little farther away from where I want to go. And then swoop my mouse in that direction. So once you get the feeling for it, you're probably going to get better because you're you're going to start learning strafe jumping. You'll probably be better at this first, where you're holding like forward and left or right to do your crouch sliding first, right? But then you should really start to learn how to maximize that one directional speed to mix it within what you want to do. And with that, you can make jumps across gaps like that. Now, like I said, for every crouch slide that Strog does, it'll, it can last for a maximum of one second. So he is like the base, almost like Quake 4 movement. But now let's show what Slash can do in comparison. Slash is arguably the fastest champ in the game. Even though technically there are a few champs that can reach higher units per second than her, consistently she is the fastest. She has the best acceleration bar none. Already in one jump, I'm almost at her max speed with that, you know, curvature movement like that. Now with her, 1-1000. One, it, it's about one and a half seconds for her on a regular strafe jump to when her slide will stop compared to Strog. But she, she has this cool feature which takes into account... The velocity in which you've fallen from an area. So as to show you an example. So see how I can only go this far? And that's just like jumping on the same level. Now let's see what happens if I fall from here and try to go to heavy. It takes into account your vertical acceleration as you're falling, so if you hold crouch as you land and you start going, you can go a long way if you fall from a big height. You go a very, very long way. Now, so let's show a lesser example of, let's say, like, I want to fall from here, and I want to get into a fight with somebody who's cutting off from, like, banana over here, going towards heavy. I was able to like circle all the way around and fight them as long as my movement isn't interrupted by like rocket splashes or tribolt splashes like that. I was able to do a complete circle around there. Now let's see what happens if I just do a regular. I get stopped over here. So even falling from something like as small as this will give you a big advantage in escaping, fighting, or just straight up entering an area to attack somebody. Look how easy it is for her to make. This is one of her best maps, by the way, because of her movement and how it's designed. It's so easy for her to cross the gap here at top mid in one jump. Okay. Now that's her base movement without her ability. Her ability is her plasma trail. You leave a trail behind you. It deals damage if people walk into it. So it's an area of effect like zoning tool. But then... If you know people are falling into it, you can also explode it from beginning to end to deal a lot of burst damage, potentially, if they're standing in it. But what it also does is it also increases her acceleration even further. So not only does she have a really high, like, you know, 750, uh, like, movement cap that she can reach very quickly, she can reach it even faster with this, and she goes above it right now to 825. She used to be even faster, but she got re nerfed recently because, to be honest, it is very, very hard to play against when she is, like, just rushing in your face going almost 900 to 1,000 units a second. And knockback doesn't really seem to affect her, you know, when she's going that fast. So, but for example, using that speed, I can do something like this. 
Ah, well, of course. Of course. Of course I failed it. So, let me get uh, the vials back again, and I'll try again. But utilizing her speed boost, you can make it all the way... All the way across this gap over to here. Don't worry, I'll get it again someday. But for now, I can just show you that you can nail jump. And then you can make it. Because you have to think about it, that strafe jumping, when you're in the air, going faster kind of keeps you in the air a bit longer. And gives you more chances to gain speed, etc, etc. So that's why, as I show you later, there are certain jumps that you just literally cannot make unless you're going fast enough, because it will allow you more airtime. Okay. Uh... Let's see here. So I've shown you strafe jumping. I've shown you that. Uh, everybody else is kind of the same. I mean, Nyx, Nyx has strafe jumping, but she also has wall jumping, which you can use to dodge in fights. You cannot, like, go from wall to wall to wall. That would make her, like, way too powerful. Five minute warning. Um, so yeah, so you can use one jump, but it can really help to cross gaps and do like really sneaky stuff to attack people like that as an example. But as you can see, like let's say I know somebody's coming from bridge, they're coming to rocket. As I'm approaching there, I'm also hiding my angle from them by using the terrain as I'm getting there. I don't need to strafe jump really well to get over here and use the wall to make that gap compared to other people who have to do it perfectly. But she utilizes strafe jumping just like everybody else. Athena is probably one of my favorite champions in the game. Uh, she has strafe jumping just like everybody else, but she also has this cool, unique uh, double jump passive that others don't. So when she holds jump at areas where there's a lip or stairs, she gets an extra boost. Anybody else that tries to jump off this, they can't make it there. Well, I don't know how I could do it the first time and then just not activate it. <laughs> it's hilarious. There we go. But it also, like, when you're jumping up a ledge like this, you can activate it as well. If you start to... Sometimes it doesn't take you very high. Other times it takes you, like, really, really high. It's, it's a little inconsistent. So, for example, a good example here is if you do this perfectly, you can double jump off these stairs and just barely make it to the bridge. Most of the time you're going to fail, though, and hit there. It's like you literally have to be perfect with it. Sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it won't. But that's how that works. Now, if you don't want to double jump, like you want to go through here, and you don't want to hit your head, you have to not hold jump. Holding jump is how you activate the double jump. So if I go through here and I'm just jumping like normally, then I'm A-OK. -okay. Her cool thing is her grapples, as you've seen me do twice now. Now, with her, you can either grapple in a straight line to pretty much anywhere. You can tether yourself to something. So an easy example is you want to get this heavy and get out. Takes you to higher ground. Now what you can also do with it is when you're, if you're holding forward, you will gain speed. But if you're holding back, you will decelerate. So you can mix it up between the two if you want to enter a fight and be unpredictable on the way to the end of your grappling hook. So that you can get above people, shoot them with rockets, or shoot with rails, things of that nature. The other thing that is really cool that she can do is if you attach the grapple to, let's say, like, the underhang <clears throat> here, and so you press once, 
to send it. But once it's attached, once you press and hold it again, you can then use it to swing in a direction. Can't catch me now. And then I press jump to cancel. And I got up to a thousand units per second. Going as fast as a rocket. Literally. Through the map like that. You can also use it to like... Uh, yeah, this is a good one. If you hold forward. You can use it to loop up to areas that are above you and surprise your enemies. Now, an, a really common way that her grapples are used though is they're used for dodging in fights and for quick maneuverability to like hit one and run. Minute warning. Because as you can see, since I have two grapples here I can show you, if I attach it here, see how it takes a little bit to get up to that speed? Now if I want to, instead of going that far, I want to go in this direction and I want to go really quickly. You want to aim down, think about like, you know, like a four, again, it's like a 45 degree angle from where you were looking. As soon as I press the grapple and it attaches to the ground, I'm going to press jump to cancel and already be strafe jumping at almost 700 units in the direction that I want to go. So as you can see, let me get some more here. She's She replenishes her ability from getting that and ammo. You can get up and go really quickly. And the cool thing is if you have like two grapples saved, you could turn around First place. and apply that speed immediately. So you can be really, really dangerous in a fight. I'll move on to another map here uh, and show a few jumps and the, the other movements. You gotta remember, I've been doing this for a long time. Prepare to fight. And I know where I want to go and the type of jumps that I'm able to do. So it's a little easier to know like how I want to move my crosshair to help me move throughout the map. And when I need to do it. Because like, you don't want to snap too quickly. Like, it doesn't help. It's nice, smooth movement. Like this, not overdoing it. Okay. So, again, to show examples of her double jump. So if I just jump on top of this and jump over, you can never make it to that armor. But with Athena, if you do one circle strafe jump, but you're holding jump right away, her double jump will take you to the center of the map. There are two other champs that you can kind of do this with, and I'll show you in a little bit. But again, or you can use it to fake out your enemy and go to the other side. Same thing like on the other map. You could potentially grapple yourself up there. Remember, for when you're swinging, you have to hold the ability button. So if I want to go real fast over there, I let it attach. Then I hold it and then release when I'm at the peak of like the angle that I need to to propel me into the room. Incoming but if I want to change direction and I want to just like grapple hop on the ground, so let me get some more files here. So let's say I'm going this way, and, and then I hear him above me, and I really can't be there now. So I just turn around, grapple, cancel with jump, and keep jumping. And I'm instantly out of there. She doesn't have instant change of direction with just strafe jumping. She has to use grapples to do it. But Athena is probably one of the coolest champs in the game. Now I'll show you some other champs that can utilize over the middle. Doom is really good on this map. Doom has strafe jumping just like everybody else, but he also has a double jump built in. So the double jumping can make the it difficult for people to judge him. when he's going to land and hit him with rockets, so it's typically better to use hit scan against Doom. Okay, But he also can take advantage, so if I just hold jump here and then double jump, I'll make it. Doom is a favorite, like, go-to character on maps like this where you can easily use double jumps to get to key positions in the center areas of maps or major items. As well as with him, with one nail jump, you can get up here. 
You used to you used to actually be able to double jump up here, but they nerfed the height from it. What if you just nail jump and then jump there? You'll make it every time. And then here, with any champ, you can just do a circle strafe with a nail jump. And it barely costs you any health. Let's go ahead and show you how much it costs compared to let's say having to to rocket jumping. It cost me seven health to go from there to there, which saves time compared to like going up here and then going over here. Sometimes you just need to be there faster. And then you're there. Uh, and I'll show you another thing that you can utilize with nail jumps up jump heads here in a second. Oh, I'm trying to think, what was I? I was about to show. Oh yeah, because the typical rocket jump. If you do a full fire plus jump at the same time when looking down to get your max height, it takes 50 health. So that's why eventually it's really good to learn. So let's say like I don't need to do a max rocket jump for here, otherwise I'll go way too high. I do it at an angle and look, it costs 37 health instead of 50. With other champs, if you just jump like this to try to get up here, you can't do it. You have to hold jump, because then it will propel you up. Holding jump at little lips and stuff gives you extra height when you're touching it. For example, like, if you jump on here, you actually don't make it. If you're like, you th if you think you have to jump here and then get up there, you, you can't make it. But if you hold jump, at the lip, you get extra propulsion off of it. Same works with stairs. Uh, of course I messed it up. At the top, at the end of stairs, you can really go like pretty high sometimes, depending on the map. This map doesn't have it. Ruins of Sarnath has a couple areas which are really nice for that. Uh, but like here, with any champ, you can do this. Doom, it's much easier because if you don't do enough nail jumps off the pad, you can double jump to make it to rail. But you can either just use the outside of the pad there, which is probably the harder way. You can jump into the pad at the corner and just use like one or two more to then make it. This will take you a while to learn and understand like the effects of like the nail gun and where you should be aiming when you do it. Doom and Nyx, Doom, Nyx, and Athena can make this jump. They're the only three champs that can actually utilize that to get up here. Everybody else has to either rocket jump from the bottom here, or take the jump pad, or they have to like help themselves with like a nail, like a nail climb to get up. Now, something else that you need to learn is that at jump pads, you don't have to always be super vulnerable and go floating into the air. Uh, I'm going to switch to a different champion since Doom has double jump already and can kind of cancel that whenever. So let's just show you a champ that just moves around regularly. Just like Ranger, right? Also, another good job, like, area to show you, like, how the lips work is, like, you could, in one jump, you can just use it with holding jump here to gain the extra boost that you need off of it. But so let's say let's say I know somebody's up there, or like they're gonna be up there, and if I take the jump pad, they'll turn the corner just in time to be able to destroy me. As I'm just floating in the air, an easy target, I'm a sitting duck. But I need the LG, and I know that if I hold jump next to this, I can clip the ledge. With almost every champion, you can hold jump to clip ledges. Okay, or crouch. Now, for some reason, this one won't let you hold crouch here, so you need to hold jump for this specific one. But as you can see, I'm not super vulnerable going up this pad. <clears throat> and now I'm down here, and they couldn't even see me, unless they're stepped up to the ledge. Same applies for, for this. 
If I don't want to get caught floating here, I can hold jump. Or I can hold crouch. It really helps when you're trying to like push in here and then attack somebody. Because they don't have time to like have LG out. And then if you're still floating and they're shooting with LG, they're just going to knock you back so far. But if you've moved in here and you hold jump, you can clip the ledge and then start fighting them right away. That applies to any map. Okay, another movement style to show you. Scalebearer is probably the most trolly ch champ in the game. Uh, so Scalebearer is a tank. He has a pretty big hitbox, but he has a he is very very mobile uh, with both his base movement and his ability. So Scale Bearer um, does have a capped movement speed, which I'll show you here. Should be 700. Yep, it's 700. Okay, but if we start walking forward, <clears throat> he's a tank, and tanks' banks uh, base movement speed is 300. But if you just hold forward, you can slowly accelerate and move around to 500. And where you move your mouse and hold forward is where you're going to go. You have an even faster turning radius than Anarchy and Sorleg. For some reason, you don't lose any speed doing a 180. So you can literally whip around and move and go where you want to. Now you can go faster than that, like I showed you with strafe jumping. So I try to do that and then combine it with the forward movement so that I can go where I want to. See how quickly, like, that's what Scale Bearer is really good at, is getting up to these lips and then maintaining that movement speed into a room because he has this passive to where if he runs into somebody, he does damage. And that damage is based off of how fast you're going. Also, if you're running at 500 units a second and you use your charge, which I will show you in a second here. So if you're right next to somebody and you charge while running this fast, you will do max damage with your charge. You won't have to wait for the ramp up or anything. But if I just start from the base speed and I use my ability, you take, I think it's two thirds reduced damage and you are pretty mobile. And if you hit somebody, you'll deal a lot of damage. So it's the same, you want to hold forward, but with it, you want to do smooth movements. And uh, I'll go get the ability back again and show you what you can kind of do. If you move too fast, it has negative acceleration built into the movement so that it tries to limit people from breaking the movement with like super high DPI. Um, but yeah, so let's say like I try to charge a guy over here and he jukes me to my left. If I smoothly move the mouse, I could turn around and do a 180. Now, unlike other champs, I can't collect ammo. Uh, there's only a couple that can do that to reduce my cooldown. So I just kind of have to wait till these vials come back up. I have to get them again and show you again what happens if you try to move your mouse very quickly. Okay, so let's do the same thing again, but I'm going to move it. I'm going to like react super fast thinking I need to like flick a rocket or something as he's juked past me instead of being calm, cool, and collect about it. I will lead the way. I moved my mouse really fast there, and I barely turned. Like, I moved it as if I would have, like, flicked like this. Like, almost a perfect 180. And I and I only went from here to here, instead of smoothly, like last time, being able to 180 and continue the charge to the end. So yeah, the biggest thing, especially like that, is when you enter other areas, like that with jumps... And then you hold forward to transfer your direction, and then you start strafe jumping. He is like the weirdest character to kind of utilize strafe jumping with. So I wouldn't try to be too complicated with him until you actually get good with strafe jumping. You could just have fun in Deathmatch or TDM just running around like this. And trying to run into people and kill them with shotgun. Or charging them to death. Clutch is probably, I would say, the hardest champion in the game. Just play this champ if you're a masochist, okay? 
Uh, he has strafe jumping like everybody else, but he has the largest hitbox in the entire game. He is a barn door. Now, you might see him in high-level duels, because if he is played perfectly, he is very tough to play against. But if you make mistakes, your mistakes are punished severely because of your hitbox size, etc. So, as you can see here, he starts at the tank speed, but he is also the champ that if you hold forward, you will gain a little bit of acceleration. As you can see there near the health bar that it's going up. You can go up to 450 just running around, but you're likely not going to get up to that speed if you're playing him in deathmatch, instagib, TDM, because there's so many people shooting at you. It's going to slow you down, okay? But what he has is dashing. So you could strafe jump with him like everybody else. But you really don't want to. Because you can already get up to that speed right away with a double dash in the air. You can dash in any direction. You can't, like, do left, like, here. I'm trying to go diagonal. You can't. It, for that, you have to just kind of angle your mouse and pick the direction. But you can dash to the side, forward, or backward anywhere that you want. The only caveat is I believe you cannot be... So you see how when he's running around like this... <clears throat> Let's get up to that higher speed. You get up to 450. That's the limit. If you are above 450 when you jump, you cannot dash again. So if I go like this, as hard as I try, as you see me like trying to tap like to, to dash left, I can't dash again. So you dash in one direction, and then you can keep the, the speed going if you want to. Or what you can do is start-stop. So as you can see, when I've st stopped on the ground, I'm utilizing his forward passive of keeping like a little bit of speed going, and then I'm going the direction that I want. So you want to like land, turn, dash, land, turn, dash, like that. It's typically easier to do that with forward than it is to like then cancel your speed and go left like that or go right because as you can see there I accidentally went too fast. But if I held forward for a split second longer and then went forward instead, that's typically what you're going to want to do. So most of your movement is going to be utilized with double tapping forward. You can also dash backwards <coughs> so if somebody's chasing you. So that you can keep spamming and cover yourself. If I, if I use the double jump by holding jump and then dashing, you can make that jump too. There's a few maps where you can do ridiculous stuff with clutch. So then here on this pad, you can most, like if you take a regular champ, they can't take this and go to rail. You know, they'll fall. But he and just dash up there. So there's a lot of shortcuts that you can take with jump pads. You can't make it. But you can dash up there. Clutch is very dangerous to fight near stairs like this, because if you hold jump, you can like really utilize like your speed going up there. His ability doesn't help him at all in terms of movement. It just reduces damage by, 50, like, I think, 40-45%. If you cancel it with the ability, you can use a mining drill, which does 10 damage per tick, but you have to be very accurate with it. So the way to, like, kind of make Clutch work, you have to get good with his movement. And then when you have your shield... You use your shield to then get in a dangerous area, be up close and personal, taking reduced damage, and you get kills that way. But when you can't use the shield, you play like a chicken. You have to really do a lot of hit and run, hide your angles, rail and leave, because you really are a huge target. But you are a little hard to hit when you dash around. It can make it difficult for people sometimes. With him, if you want a rocket jump boost, you need to kind of like do a lame one and then dash. You can't you can't do what everybody else does because then you can't add additional speed in the air because you're going too fast for the dash cap. But 
But he can also nail jump dash up to here. Same here. So like I said, Clutch is one of the hardest characters in the game. You'll likely want to learn uh, him last. I'm trying to think if I missed anybody. Everybody else has pretty standard movement. Uh... Oh yeah, we can show Sword Legus like Anarchy, but yeah, like <clears throat> to utilize like jumps off the... Remember, if I take this and I just hold right or left, I can't gain enough speed with her. But if I hold forward, I can make that jump like Clutch can. I arc it nice and smooth, and I can get up there with just four. Same applies for this. I can take this jump head, and I can actually take it and attack here right away. Other champions can't do that. But she utilizes air control just like Anarchy does. But you can see if somebody's like hiding in an area around a corner, like how overwhelming that air control can be. Like, let's say you're really weak and you're hiding at machine gun, you hear a rocket jump. She could be anywhere. She could be going from rail to mega. She could be going up to rocket. She could be rocket jumping up to T. But instead, RJ boosted and is here ready to fight you. And just overwhelms your position with that speed. And Anarchy's the same way with that playstyle. She, however, compared to him, as you can see here, you could kind of gain some speed just holding forward. I wouldn't recommend learning to just do this. You need to learn how to strafe jump. Like, do your first circle jump, and then start jumping around. Okay. But, uh, that's pretty much everybody. I could show you some... Like, probably, probably the best example is on Deep Embrace of, like, when you have enough speed, you gain height. Okay, so the easiest jump in the game to kind of show you that you need speed to get there is this. So if you jump and you need to utilize the, like, ledge jumping that I've been showing you when, when it's, like, the only time I really want you to hold jump. Okay, so if you jump on top of it and then jump again, you'll never make it. As you can see, like, you hit your, you hit your face, like, right, <laughs> right on the edge. Okay, if you hold jump. You can see, oh, you hit your chest there. But guess what? If I actually utilize circle jumping, I can just make it in. Boom, boom. I'm up there. Or you can make it easier and just do it in two jumps. But otherwise, you can't do it. And so like this, I would jump and then I'm holding jump right before I'm going to touch the ledge. The same applies for here. If I jump, jump, I'll never make it. I just knock the wind out of Ranger by hitting the ledge on his stomach. But if I hold jump, it just gives you an extra propulsion at ledges. But you don't want to be holding jump when you're strafe jumping around. Big protection. reminder to not do that. But there, if I held jump like Quad I was holding spawned. jump here. Protection spawned. Oops, sorry. I missed it that time. So I get a little extra oomph off the staircase. So because I'm holding jump and I get the little extra extra length, so I get a little extra air time, I'm able to make that jump. Whereas likely, if I just regular jump here, yeah, see? I'm gonna fall into the pit. But you can make it in three jumps if you use the double jump correctly on the staircase. Boom, boom, boom. And again, if I don't use the double jump, if I just tap jump, then I can't make it. And I fall into the pit. So this is a very basic, you know, tutorial of what strafe jumping, crotch sliding, air control was, dashing whatever scale bearer's movement is, uh, 
those are all the movements in the game and the, the grappling. There are some people that uh, that know how to grapple even better in terms of there is some wild stuff you can do with Athena. I'm not going to go into that into detail. Seven years of movement poggers. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the resub. Uh, I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but I, I'm done for now, and I can do more tutorials later. I can like help more with rocket jumping. Um, anybody that needs to can come to the stream, and they can ask questions. And when I have time, I'm more than happy to uh, go through stuff like this again real quick and just try to show people what they can do. Um, and really what makes Quake really special. Obviously, like the, the combat with guns and... And shooting is so nice in this game, but the movement is what really, it's the cherry on top. It's what makes Quake feel special. And the fact that so many people don't understand how to utilize that movement and can't play the game to like their play style and to actually be able to express what, what they're capable of in the game is a shame. So I hope that you are able to take something from this. You're able to learn because the game becomes so much more fun when you're actually able to move around. Um, so yeah, the one thing I didn't go through, which I will right now, this is a good example. If you're just jumping into the ledge, you'll like get stopped here at corners, right? As you can see, I've jumped and I got hit by the wall and I got stopped. But there's wall nudging so that if you imagine you're just using the little bit of your shoulder, you can clip through the corners like that. See how I was able... You could see it's like a slight stop and then it lets you go through. Instead of like being slowed down to a halt. You could do this with any champion. It, this one will just take practice. It's very hard to explain. You just have to learn the type of angle that your body needs to hit as you're strafe, strafing through the corner to be able to utilize it. So, uh, but that's it.